Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we are here. This is going to be week 10 of our UBL matches. This is going to be against Trexus and the Indianapolis Cobalions. We both have the same record right now. He does, I believe, have an edge on me in differential. And pretty much only the winner of this match is going to be still in contention for that third seed in our division. So this is pretty much a must win for both of us. I am in Boston for PAX. We both are. So we did this battle in real life. We did this face to face. And you can see the matchup right here. It was definitely not great for me. It did have a relative slow team. He didn't even bring the Cryagonal, which was his fastest Pokemon at 105. But at the same time, I needed a lot to break through his bulk. And I had to be wary of, of a Scarf Thunderous. I probably wasn't wary enough of a Scarf Thunderous in this match, but that was absolutely on my mind. And in all honesty, on this team, it's really the only one that would make sense to Scarf. And it kind of does seem necessary with a lot of my faster threats. But in any case, it was a lot of fun to meet Trexus. If you guys see his new profile picture on his Twitter, I took that. And he was just a cool guy to get a chance to meet. And of course, like I said, battle IRL. So I just want to get right in, into this battle. Like I said, um, I had a lot of defensive threats that I had to break through. I tried a kind of an offensive build, but in all honesty, Umbreon could have beaten my team. I ran this team by uh, Randy HLD Productions, and uh, he straight up said, yikes, this matchup does not look good, and that I probably don't have enough to break through Umbreon because my premier unit is Scarf. But either way, I lead off with my Meloetta here. Um, out comes a Thunderous now. I know Thunderous naturally outspeed, so I didn't want to assume any Scarfs right now, but I did honestly think that I was going to be able to scare this thing out. I wasn't able to. I just U-turned. I thought it was going to switch out. I clearly didn't. It's fine. From here, I just go straight into my Tauros because I know my Tauros threatens it. And here's where I kind of wanted to, like, feel out the Scarf because, um, he would have to switch out. He probably doesn't do enough with Dark Pulse and Tauros hits like a gosh dang truck. As you can see, he goes into Amoongus on the switch in and I get a hefty, hefty body slam. That was, he assumed Bandit. Well, he told me he thought, like that was his first reaction in the moment, but um, this is just sheer force life warp damage. And he goes for the protect on this a second body slam. So he doesn't want to give me his Amoongus yet. And this is where I kind of make a little bit of a hard read because I know that a Celesteela switch in is pretty likely here. So I do end up going for the Fire Blast. I try to make the hardest of reads in this situation and it did end up working. He goes into a Celesteela, but I did do a little bit of a calc. I don't, I can't remember all of the calcs. And especially in that moment, it was a stressful moment with him like five feet away from me. But um, I did know that Fire Blast should do a little bit more, so I can tell just from that damage that um, it was at least max HP, if not like a little bit defensive. So I go into my Delphox here, and my Delphox is Specs. It could blow this thing back, and he, I just switched into a Leech Seed. It's totally fine. But I'm thinking I was going to scare this thing out. I went the hard breed for Slow King. This because like I was kind of feeling myself after that fucking uh, Fire Blast, but. He just stays in, he holds his ground. Now, I didn't run any health, but this is a max attack. Um, I believe Timid, Delphox, with Specs. I'm pretty positive a Fire Blast would have blown this thing back. Then again, he, he had the easy comeback with um, Slow King. I don't know, probably wasn't the best play, but I kind of wanted to make a hard read. Like I said, I was kind of feeling myself in that moment. But at this point, I really don't uh, really know what I want to bring in right now. I go into Pre Marina. And my premier is Scarf, so part of me is thinking that I can force a switch or something like that, but uh, I didn't have the balls to just go for Surf like I should have because of the Slow King and the Amoongus in the back, and that's just kind of what his defensive core did to me a whole bunch. But he Iron Heads me, and it does so much damage. I did not expect that damage even a little bit. And premier is so low at this point, I just end up giving him my Meloetta, and that was 100% a mistake that, that did need to happen, because right after this, I go into my Greninja, and Greninja's just going to serve, and he gives me a Celesteela, and, and, all, and all honestly, I should have done this before even trying to bring in the Pre-Marina, but I, my thinking was that even if I did bring in the Pre-Marina, I'd be fine more or less, because... Uh, the pre would at least be able to two hit, but it looked like I rolled a two hit, and I really didn't want to risk that for whatever reason. I mean, my pre was on like really low HP. I think I feel like it was 28 or something like that. I, I don't remember. Right? And either way, the Altaria comes in. Now, I know the Altaria can revenge me, but I wanted to get as much damage off on this Altaria as possible, and I didn't want it to give, and I didn't want it to get any setup for free. So I just go for damage. I give up my Greninja, unfortunately, to get that damage, but that was pretty much my thinking there. If it did Dragon Dance, and honestly, I probably lose from here. I honestly just probably lose. But 
um, I, I gave it up just for damage, and I found out later that it's a bit of a defensive one, just to, I guess, I believe it was to counteract, like, a few of my bulkier Pokemon, but it wasn't offensive or set up in any way, it was just, like, bulky and, and a reasonably hard hitter. So that was a relief for me. I can bring a Primarina, which again is Scarf. And at this point, it honestly kind of useless. It was a mistake to kind of bring it into the first place, but also to preserve it. And now we're at a point where his Slowking, his Slowking can come in after the Altaria and we're gonna kind of wall each other. I do get a lucky special attack drop, but as you can see, we're gonna get into a cycle of Calm Minding here. And um, it's not gonna be that great. Um, it doesn't even damage me for a few turns, and, and honestly, I was 100% prepared to give it this Primarina, but it's it becomes clear in like a turn or two that like he's clearly in here for the setup fodder, and I can't really stay in and just keep pumping Moonblast into this thing when they're going to be doing less and less over time, and I can't really rely on just a special attack drops, so I have to eventually try to time out a, a slack off and switch out i believe i do it on this turn if i don't then i mean yeah what was i thinking but i believe eventually i try to call this but also in my head i i was trying to um count out its moves so so a slack off calm mind i i assume scald which, which i was i did end up being right on the scald so i had to also wonder if it had room for the ice beam and i found out later it didn't have room for the ice beam it was dual stab with Calm Mind and Recover, or Calm Mind and Slack Off. So I come in with my Latios and I start Calm Minding because that's really what I have to do in this situation, especially because at this point, I believe I was still fearing the Ice Beam. But uh, at this point, we're just gonna Calm Mind up on each other. Now this um, Latios is actually Calm Mind, Recover, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt because Bolt Beam did a lot of work to his team. Again, doesn't do quite enough to the Umbreon without a bunch of Calm Mind boosts, but at this point, I honestly thought that we were gonna, both going to meet at plus six, but he starts scalding me, and he told me straight up he was fishing for a burn in this moment, which is fine, totally fair, but I was super scared of getting burned, so I stop at plus four. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know where I'm at right now, um, but I stop at plus four, plus four, because I'm terrified of a burn, and I was joking around with the people uh, next to us, between us, like, hey, what do I do? Do I go to plus six or do I just like call over right here? And some guy next to us um, says, says, nah, you got the sweep here, plus four, just go for it. And uh, that was a, a little bit of a mistake, but that's for a little bit later. Either way, I end up stopping at plus four uh, once I get there. And I do go on the offensive a little bit. It might be this turn. Is it this turn? No. Okay, so I'm just recovering up here. I hope it's next turn, but either way. If we are in, in a little bit of this stall fest, he is still fishing for a burn, and I still, in my head, I want to go to plus six. I really, really do. But a scald burn could really hurt me, and here's where I finally reveal Gigabolt Havoc. Z Thunderbolt at plus four is going to just destroy this uh, Slow King. Now, in honesty, this is probably a potentially game losing um, mistake that I made right here because. If I'm being honest, I should, probably should have saved the Thunderbolt, the z Thunderbolt, for something else later on, but I burned it here. Oh, and he was telling me that he was genuinely considering um, a Thunderous switch in, but this is why I didn't even go for regular Thunderbolt until the Z-Thunderbolt, because um, I could have had Energy Ball, I could have had Shadow Ball, I could have had a whole bunch of things to hit this for super effective damage. If I reveal Thunderbolt too early, then that would invite the switch in, and I do have the Ice Beam, but again, he has Scarf Thunderous with Dark Hole, so whatever. And now he reveals Secret Tech, the Sucker Punch um, Umbreon, and I take a chance here. He looked me directly in the eyes to see if I was to see if I would recover on his potential Sucker Punch, and this was 100% of 50-50, and like I said, we looked each other straight in the eyes, and I bluffed really hard. Um, I, I think he asked me, like, would you recover in this situation? I was like, I don't know, Doom, <laughs> or something like that happened. And I did go for the recover. I end up hitting it with two Thunderbolts. I did want to, like, mess around a little bit more. Maybe I could have, like, played some recovery games or some stuff like that. But it ultimately wasn't worth it. And uh, I could tell that if you got another round or two of leftovers, then it could potentially be bad in terms of him being able to take another Thunderbolt. 
but in comes thunderous and here's where i realize i done fucked up because you can see from that damage that was a thunder pulse, a dark pulse at plus four and if i'd gone to plus six then i would have been able to take that a lot better i probably would have taken two of those dark pulses and been able to just ice beam this thing for pretty much game at this point and i make another really pretty bad switch into um into Primarina because you can see Primarina could take a Dark Pulse. If I'd given up my Latios right there, I could have gone into Scarf Primarina. I would have been able to either take a Dark Pulse or it would have forced a switch into the Amoongus. And it would have done more than having a kind of a dead weight Latios at this point. That was a potential that was another potentially game um choking mistake that I made right there. But I go into Tauros and he switches into the Amoongus here and I'm able to body slam it twice. We both knew that that was, um, that that, how much damage that that would do in this situation. But in honesty, in retrospect, it, cause it does kind of seem like a bit of a mistake. So in those final few turns, he does switch out with the Amoongus. If he did stay in with the Thunderous and just, um, taken that body slam, then he would have been able to take me out next turn, and he actually would have won the game from there. But switching out to the Amoongus, I think, kind of lost in the game in that moment. And it did come down to me trying to hit a Stone Edge in that last turn, but in the end, I did hit that Stone Edge. And thankfully, we do come out with a 2 0 win. Now, by no means, uh, means that we're going to be able to make playoffs in the situation but again this was a must win to even be in contention we do absolutely have to win week 11 and a lot of other things have to happen it's going to come down to differential i pretty much have to win convincingly next match in order to have a chance at it but um this is kind of where we're at if i had won that match last week or if i gen that toros correctly then we'd be, we'd be in a fantastic position right now but as the case is right now, we're going to be fighting for that differential, for that last seed, and we're going to do that next week. So thank you guys so much for watching. We will be back, like I said, with more UBL matches, and the PGL is in its bye week for PAX. That's going to be coming back next week as well. So with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be once again out.